In this video in the SQL Advanced series, we'll look at a Type 2 subquery. This is also called the Correlated Subquery. We'll be working with the HR schema and we'll work with student teams, the student teams database as well. So let's take a look at Type 2 subqueries. In a previous video, you saw that the Type 1 subquery executes independently from the outer query. That means the subquery runs, generates a data set, and the outer query uses that temporary data set. And this is a key difference between the Type 1 and Type 2 subqueries. The Type 2 subquery references one or more columns in the outer query, so it does not run independently of the outer query. Also, the Type 2 subquery executes for each row in the outer query. Type 2 subqueries are used for what we call difference problems, a question of what data in the outer query does not exist in the subquery. As with the Type 1, the Type 2 query output should not show any columns from the subquery. So let's take a look at an example. We have, uh, we're going to see a list of students working on the Auto Shop database project. So they're on a team that was assigned this particular project. The subquery will find the team ID for the team working on the Auto Shop project, and then the outer query will list the students assigned to that team ID. So the example we have here is a type 1 version of this, where we're going to, in the subquery, get the team ID from teams where project is like, and then we're uh, passing in the string for auto shop with wildcard characters on either side. We're going to compare the team ID from the subquery with the team ID for each student from the students table in the outer query. And when we run that, we will see that we have these three students. The type 2 version would look like this. We're doing a select asterisk it doesn't really matter what column we put in the SELECT clause. It's not directly used by the outer query. And then we're doing looking at FROM TEAMS and where we are joining the outer table students.student underscore team ID with the inner table teams.team ID. And so when we run that query, we'll get the same output, but using the type 2 approach. So let's take a closer look at how this works. The outer query joins with the inner query in the WHERE clause. You do not list the student's table in the subquery, but you will reference it in the WHERE clause. The type 1 subquery, or unlike the type 1 subquery, you will not put a field where you'd say where team ID, for example, or student team ID in. You just say where exists, and then the join in the where clause of the subquery will take care of the rest. So it doesn't matter what you put in the select clause, unlike in type 1, you're going to make the uh, evaluation based on the WHERE clause when you join the inner query table to the outer query table. So let's take another uh, look at another Type 2 subquery. We're going to list employees who've had more than one job title. In other words, employees that have had more than one position with the company. We're using the HR schema. The subquery will use the job history table to find employees with more than one job title and the outer query will show employee data if the employee has a related record in the subquery. So our subquery we're going to use to get a job count grouping by employee ID, and we will only list employee ID if the count, the job count, is greater than one. So when we do that, we see that we have three people who have a job count of two. So I, I wrote this and I ran it as a test, but you need to realize that I will have to modify and you will have to modify this in order to make it run as a subquery, as a type 2 subquery. 
So when we look at this one, we see the subquery where I have from job history in the from clause where I am joining the job history table employee ID to employees, the table in the outer query based on employee ID. And then in the outer query I'm just displaying information from the employee table and that, that will be displayed if there is this relationship. So when we run this we see that yes the three people with their employee ID shown from the initial subquery, uh, they also show up here with employee information, employee name in the outer query. But once again, this initial query I had to modify so that it would run independently of the outer query. Once we put it inside as a subquery, as a true type 2 subquery, it cannot run without the outer query. So let's take a look at another type 2 subquery. This will be for what we refer to as a difference problem. We want to show students who have not completed an evaluation as an evaluator. Your initial take on this might be to try doing a comparison where student ID doesn't equal evaluator ID, but that doesn't work. If you ran this query, you would see that there is a lot of redundancy here and it's actually just incorrect. Uh, Andrew Agassi has done evaluations, but he do his ID doesn't match up with many, many of the evaluator IDs listed in the evaluations table. So we're not getting what we actually wanted to get from this. So now I'm going to do a subquery where I say select asterisk from evaluations where and then joining with the outer query where students.studentID equals evaluator ID. So I'm joining the outer table with the or yeah the outer table with the inner table. And when I do that, I see that I actually have three people who have not completed an evaluation uh, in our student team's database. So to to uh, verify this uh, or to do another twist on this, why don't you see if you can find out if any students have not had an evaluation done about them. They haven't been evaluated as an evaluatee. So type 2, type 1, or what? What should you use? You've probably looked at some of these examples and wondered if a subquery is even necessary. In many cases, you can answer a question without using a subquery. In the case of using distinct versus a subquery, typically the query will probably run more efficiently if you use the subquery to eliminate the duplicates. Uh, thinking about, and I referenced this in the previous video, if you think about millions of rows instead of the small tables in our example databases, then efficiency becomes an important issue. Uh, I would say that also even though you could answer some of these problems without using a subquery, it's a good idea as you get as you practice your SQL to try to write the solution in more than one way and then see if the output matches up. It's a good way to do a self check on what you're writing. In general though, the use of subqueries is a good way to decompose a problem and it can make it easier to read than when you come back later and try to figure out what it was you were trying to do with that particular solution. So what we've done is looked at the type 2 correlated subquery. We've seen examples of type 1 and type 2 and we've seen in particular a difference problem solved with the type 2 subquery.